Uh, I think take cover would be the life decreasing option and turn invisible probably is able to see the invisible I'm just gonna lightning bolt him I guess uh, You raise your hand and let loose a mighty lightning bolt straight at Calmagus The bolt stops before reaching him and disappears as though the magic was simply dispelled I did not think that would work uh, I mean I thought that would at least stop him but I did not think he would have anti-magic field or some shit The succubi laugh and hurl black bolts down upon you You dive to the side Uh a bolt strikes the street beside you, spattering rock. What the hell did she throw? A black bolt. I have no idea what that is. Life decreases 100. Great. A dead hero. You shall be remembered. Besides, as William Shakespeare said, well, we were born to die. Sure. Another strike. Uh, another bolt strikes uh, you at the base of the neck. At the base of the neck. And your body goes numb as you uh, fall onto your back. I want him alive, shouts Galmagus, but it's too late. You already feel your life slipping away. Perhaps that is for the best. You'll hate to find out what Galmagus has planned for you. As you finally succumb to your wounds. So what do you mean continue? Oh, of course, reverse choice, right. Uh, so let's just take cover, I suppose. Quickly, you wriggle through the hole into the ruins. Your uh, glowing sword uh, peels back the shadows as you crawl deeper into the wreck. You haven't gone before, uh, gone far before the ground shakes. The voice of a woman rises up over the sound of battle. Crush it all, my lord, and squash him like the bug he is. No one him alive, comes a booming voice that must belong to Galmagus. Uh, then there is a flash following by a wave of heat accompanied by a scream and an explosion. Dust cascades down around you. Uh, cursing you crawl faster thankfully the almost completely collapsed roof is less collapsed further in so you can get up from the crawling and you can soon commence a crouching run the hallway out of this chamber is completely caved in but there is a hole in the other wall not wanting to be trapped in here you climb out the sun is almost completely set adding a pink hue to the sky for bahamut uh, comes a mighty voice like a natural king the voice of gold tree uh, swiftly you climb to the top of the partially collapsed building uh, that you had just crawled out of uh, from up high. Why would you go up a high so that they can see you? You peer back from uh, whence you came. In the distance, Goldred's eyes bulge as he helplessly snaps his jaw while uh, Galmagus strangles him. Oh, damn. Uh, the demon's arms wrapped around Goldred's neck, neck in a chokehold. Uh, how big is he? Fucking hell. Is he chokeholding a fucking dragon? Uh, Galmagus stands upon the uh, flank of his mount, the nightmare horse laying on its side, motionless, its spine snapped, showing a glint of bone. More demons are on Galtier's back, hacking with a cruel weapon. A succubus lands on the dragon near his head, straddles the neck with her uh, legs, takes hold of the horn in one hand and steadies herself and plunges a short sword into one of the Galtier's golden eye. The dragon shudders as his long tongue rolls out uselessly in his final, final death throes. Ugh, your legs become weak for a moment. The dragon's body goes limp. The suc succubus leaps up and takes flight, her short sword dripping blood. Galmagus releases the dragon's throat, allowing the great beast's head to strike the ground. A uh, brutal, undignified death for such a majestic creature, says Egra. The mockery is uncalled for now, you whisper aloud. Only an obs observation, says Egra. You sheath your sword, unsling your bow from your back, and swiftly notch and Why would you do that? Don't you want to hide or some shit? It would be a long shot from here, but with your position from the roofs, if possible, or maybe a glinting bolt. Man, this fucking, oh, for fuck's sake, it's so fucking annoying, like, the fucking vibrations are coming into my fucking room, and it feels like he's drilling my fucking skull or some shit. I don't know how much of this is getting picked up, but holy shit is this annoying. I'm, 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 I'm probably looking like an idiot, nothing is probably getting picked up by the mic, and it just sounds like I'm just screaming at nothingness, but it's so fucking loud, like someone's drilling right on top of my fucking head. Um, anyway, why would you shoot a bow arrow again? Don't you want, do you want to reveal your position? Hide, you dumbass, hide. You shouldn't have even gone to help the dragon in the first place. It would be a long shot from here, but with your position on the roof, it's possible. Or maybe a lightning bolt. No more such base combat spells, says Egra. You're no longer playing the part of a wizard. You're about to argue with the godling when movement catches your eye from above. Pivot to see a, a succubus in a light ring mail armor flying towards you. See, you got on top and she saw you. The armor is partial and impractical, not even covering her flat fit abdomen, not her long sculpted leg. What the fuck is the point of the armor then? Uh, she appears to be unarmed and her manicured hands are held up as though motioning for peace. Her face is soft, round, beautiful, innocent, despite the small horns on her forehead. Her long, uh, her long brown hair flows in the wind. Yet does not tangle. She is smiling diplomatically. You leap down from the apex of the damaged roof so that you're well out of sight of Galmagus and the other demons. Permissions to land, Nikolai, she says, motioning to the roof. Uh, besides, you ever like to speak? Um, 
I have no idea who this is. I feel like she belongs to the fucking group of uh, succubus that the other succubus was with. What is the f f one from Wizard's Choice? What is the name again? Fucking hell, what's her name? Um, the succubus, the, yeah, the, the, you know the, what succubus I'm talking about. I really have forgotten her name. Um, it's pointless to shoot her with a bow and like let her land and then attack her. I don't think you can even kill her even if you went all out until you decide to use all your favors or just allow her to speak at this point. Nod to her and point to the roof beside you and sling your bow. Her eyes dart to the hilt of a sword then back to your face as her smile widens. She lands a few meters away, further away from you. Then you have pointed because of the sword. You stand here alone and without armor, she says, admirably, admirably, admiration is in her voice. You're a brave man. She winks at you. Feel a strong attraction take hold. How you would enjoy the touch of these soft fingertips uh, and the pressing of her lips to yours. Agra chuckles in your head. The distraction, overwhelmed distraction to the succubus diminishes. Although you still can't help but smile back at the beautiful demon. You return your arrow to your quiver, yet you keep your sword, uh, your hand near the hilt of his sword. And the rust in your sheath. Uh, now that you've decided to speak with her, there are a few options for uh, for what you want to accomplish. Do you want to brag, always fun, and find out what she wants, or trick her to come closer? Um, I think. Oh, that's a good one. Come embrace me now. That's like uh, trying to like trick her or some shit. She, uh, let's just. Uh, I don't know. We could trick her, but like I don't know if I want to actually want to fight her. I don't. I don't know. That's the problem with this. Um, yeah, sure, let's, let's go with that one. Come embrace me now. Um, you say, taking a step towards her, her, um, her smile is large now, showing brilliant teeth. I would like nothing more. She starts towards you, an explosion in the distance flashes, and in, the, in that instance, you catch the barest glimpse of botched rotten skin on her face. Uh, you step forward, uh, giving her your most roguish expected smile. As you come near, you swiftly draw your sword and swing. She has fast reflexes, she dodges, dodges back. Your sword strikes an invisible sheet around her body, and sending, you, sending up a plume of white sparks. Nevertheless, your weapon cleaves through her magic barrier, and the tip of your blade slices through her unarmored stomach. Screaming in rage, she turns to flee, crouching to leap of the building. However, you are already pressed forward, and your blade is already moving. As she sweeps back her wings, you slice deep into the webbings of one of her wings, severing tendons. She screams again, leading. Instead of taking flight, she spirals down to the ground. Uh, your sword grows blight and tugs at you in anticipation. You leap off the wall and land in a, with a somersault as the uh, succubi is getting to her feet, facing away, her, her, preparing to run. You drive a sword into her back. Um, through up to the hill, she gur gurgles. You kick her body as she as you pull back the blade. Oh, like Dark Souls backstab animation. She falls to the ground, rolling onto her back. Interesting. Her eyes roll up and she shouts in a deep voice, "Tell me where Azazel is, and I'll." Uh, but she doesn't finish her words as you cleave her face in two. Uh, my, that was decisive," says Agro in your mind. Her kind slew Goldtrit. You whisper as you catch your breath. He was a noble dragon. Really, really, really. What is happening? See, this is why I say Anuxius was way better of a character than um, a Rooster. Your satisfaction is soon replaced with an uneasy, uneasy re realization that the voice just now from the lips of the succubus had not been her own. Even now, her vacant eyes, the one not mangled, focuses on you, possessed you under. You cleave her head again. The deep voice comes to you now, as though. Uh, pushing up from the earth below for an eternity and more you shall pay for Vesa. Vesa, the succubus back at the house ruder here you think? I did not say her, you s slay her, you say aloud. Technically true, it did not strike the killing blow. Uh, that was Azazel. I shall twist you into a thing most horrid and you shall beg for your soul. Okay. Obviously, however, the voice belongs to is unimpressed with technicalities. Panic floods you and you sprint away. A dark chuckle follows you. You cannot escape. Well, you're not going to take this word, uh, take his word on that. You pour on the speed and leap over the stone wreckage. A demon spots you and lunges with a curved blade. We are already past him, lost in the smoke. You continue to dodge your way all th uh, through the smoke, coughing as you go in the uh, through the chaos, smoke, coughing as you go in the smoke. You nearly run into a goblin uh, who is hunched over the corpse of an old woman. He looks over at you with large onion-like eyes. A human finger hangs from his mouth. You split his head uh, like an axe splitting firewood before he can uh, pick up the spear at his feet. Without a pause, you resume running, your lungs burning, trying to make your way into the heart of the city. If anyone is left alive, that's uh, where they would be. Hopefully, at least uh, in the Duke's castle. The 
fortress appeared impregnable to you. As far as you can tell, uh, there's not much of a battle where you are now. The only humans you have seen have been corpses. Either the front line is further into the city, or everything is overrun and you're in even bigger trouble than you thought. Perhaps you should transform into one of these sort of monsters. You think uh, as you hold your glowing holy weapon at the ready, no, you decide. You're in no mood to impersonate a demon uh, for any length of time. Plus, your sword might even reject you if you become a demon. Invisibility uh, may be an an option though on the other hand you may want to preserve your favor perhaps you could just try to slip through his uh, through this enemy territory naturally i think we should hide uh there are forces that can probably see us but i think we should still hide from we can at least be safer from other forces that could see us but then again uh it said i still remember egra's words very clearly that if i hide there are people who can see us better than they would not have been able to see us if we were not hi hiding so i think i don't want to ping my location to uh, galmegas just to avoid the nearby encounter so let's just continue as we are now uh, i know how you I know how to move unseen, you think. Uh, tell that to your sword, says Egra. It's true. Your glowing sword is a beacon in the approaching darkness of night. But you can live with anxiety. You sheath your sword in favor of another weapon. Your dagger, I think. Uh, since you're uh, wanting to avoid combat completely, there is no point in shooting something at a distance. If you're hard to fire, it's likely going to be in close quarters. You run from cover to cover, crouching as you go, dagger in, your dagger in hand. You're following along one of the wider roads you think is the main archway into the heart of the city. At least you think you are. It's hard to distinguish where the road is with so few buildings left standing. So much wreckage strewn about. Neville's tongue. I hope I'm not going deeper into enemy territory, you think. You crouch behind a mostly leveled wall and peek out. You're both gladdened and saddened by what you see beyond a temple of Alethea standing stands in clearing up the street uh, indeed you have been there a few times now and so you're familiar with the area the bad news is that is like uh, that is like most everything around here is nearly level you might not even have recognized if not for the statue of Alethea still standing atop one remaining tower you break from cover and run across corpses are scattered through the cobblestone square surrounding the temple most of them are demons however uh, there are also Blood spattered white robes along the uh, carnage, priest of Alethea. Your focus, uh, your focus rests on the polished helm of a likely a dead paladin. His visor up. He must have been a handsome man in life, clean shaven with a strong chin. His glassy eyes stare up at the sky. The steps of the temple where you where you left wounded bone brow is now covered with bodies the la the great large doors have been smashed into two splinters suddenly a pile of nearby corpses burst open up comes a wiry demon laughing his horns aimed at you like a bull about to charge ambush before you can react he uh, rushes forward you barely have time to leap to the side avoiding getting gored his claws reach out as he passes uh, snatching your tunic pulling you to him you slash your dagger across his forearm cutting him deep he bellows and lets go uh, why do I have a cloak at this point? You stagger back and draw your sword. His large, hate-filled uh, eyes open wide at the sight of your brilliantly glowing weapon. He, he turns to run. You leap forward and bury your blade into his back with a overhead clop, overhead chop. He falls to his knees. You and your s uh, sword make short work of him. More screeches and yells echo nearby. More demonic shapes burst up from the corpses. Too many, you think. You sprint away out of the clearing into an alley and scramble up onto the pile of bricks from left-hand building. Looking back, there are three fast-moving demons lobbing towards you. Um, their horrible tongues lolling. You leap through the hole to the uh, you leap through the hole in the building and fall a meter or two. Hit the floor hard as you roll with the impact. Then you then up onto your feet. Uh, with darkness falling, uh, it's dimly lit in here. Your glowing sword gives you light you need. Find a stairway going down. Uh, just as you hear the scrambling of claws behind. Down the stairs you go into the room uh, room below. I have no idea where am I going. In I'm inside the temple or. Uh, is my character outside the temple i have no idea i like to refer to him as my character despite the fact that he's clearly a completely separate character from what i would like to play he's not my character i'm just playing as individual uh, down the stairs you go into the room below the walls down here are splattered with blood there's a smash of window to your right with a ta uh, table below you, you jump up onto the window leap through the window head first again you strike the ground hard roll this time over a loose brick your back aches as you roll up onto your feet and squint down sprint down the road quite the acrobat uh, champion says egra when i have to when i have to be you say huffing as you run 
uh, with luck the enemy has not breached the second wall therefore you like to get out of the outer ring into the middle ring fortunately you have that oh, no wait a uh, middle ring has been breached because you remember that one guy uh, the one uh, merchant we met the, who made pork for the emperor or whatnot made pork for the duke he said that his shop was in the middle ring near the inner ring so in middle ring is run over i think 